Hey videographers, viewer KW asked about my video workflow for the Fujifilm GFX100. So this is the second of three videos about video workflow for Fujifilm cameras. And this video, recorded on the Fujifilm X-H1, is produced in wide gamut HDR, an output to Rec 2020 PQ. I hope your display supports that. The first video demonstrates a standard HDR workflow primarily using internal recordings on the GFX 50S2. Uh, the third video is recorded and output using HLG, hybrid log gamma with the Fujifilm X-T4. Uh, that capability has not been implemented on as many models. Uh, because the rendering results are different, these three approaches can't really be demonstrated in a single video. Now, at a high level, my workflow is to record in camera using the highest available bitrate, then to import the video into a nonlinear editor. I use the current version of Final Cut 10.5. So after reviewing the recordings, I assemble the good base takes onto a timeline. Then I sync the externally recorded audio. Exposure and color corrections are set before trimming and adding B-roll, which may require its own corrections. Then titles and lower thirds. Next step adds transitions where a straight cut doesn't convey my intent. I add music or effects as required and make the necessary audio EQ adjustments. And finally, I render and output the video before sending it off to the client or uploading it to YouTube. My workflow includes recording audio on an external recorder that approach provides higher quality and more control. For these videos, that's the Zoom F2 lapel mic and recorder. I'm using the X-H1 in movie mode with the highest video settings, 4K at 30 frames. Although not indicated or selectable, that records using the H.264 codec, and I'm using the 200 megabit data rate. That setting is suitable for 4K videos destined for YouTube and for display on a display that supports HDR. I'm using an external recorder with the camera's info display on to show you the menu and the settings. <laughs> you know my video settings, manual exposure mode, shutter 1 60th, aperture f4 for a defocused background, ND filter. Well, I'm turning the F-log setting on. That disables several image quality settings, film simulations, highlight shadow control, and color saturation control. All of the adjustments represented by those settings, and more, are made using color grading during the editing phase. That's the advantage of F-Log, capturing a wider dynamic range and making extensive color adjustments not available in camera. F-Log resets to a minimum ISO of 800 on the X-H1, and that might put additional pressure on your exposure settings. With F-Log, the histogram should be centered, staying well away from the right, which would otherwise be overexposed. Again, a few test recordings are invaluable. You review them in the editor with the LUT applied, helping to get the exposure correct. Uh, white balance is available with F-Log, and I recommend that you capture and use a custom white balance. And then, with those settings, do a short test recording and use it as a color baseline while editing. Now, if you have an external display that supports LUTs, I'm using a 7-inch 4K HDR Atomos Ninja Inferno, download and install the free Fujifilm F-Log lookup tables. That displays what the color scene looks like after the LUT is applied in editing. Now, here in Collingwood, I'm fortunate that I can make a test recording and immediately evaluate it. But even if it's not that easy, meaning you need to go scouting and take some test shots at the location beforehand, it's a step I highly recommend for quality results. But that process also helps refine your specific workflow. Now, next step, the edit suite, and the remainder of this video is recorded from Final Cut. I don't mean to suggest that it's the most capable, 
I use it because I'm familiar with it, and making a change to another NLE will be time-consuming and frustrating. If you haven't yet chosen a video editor, allow me to recommend the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Although it's very capable, with excellent color controls, the free version doesn't support 4K or HDR output. In Final Cut, create a new library. Click Modify to change the library properties and select Wide Gamut HDR. That enables access to the wider color and dynamic range settings. Create a new project, 4K 16x9, 30 frame drop. Because I'm going to post this on YouTube ProRes 422, you may observe a slight bump in quality at 422 HQ. Then color space, wide gamut HDR, Rec 2020 PQ. Let me know if you need a video that decodes all of those terms. Anyway, that's our project. Now, import. I put all the files I need in a single folder. Sync the audio with Clip Synchronize. And put the combined clip on the timeline. Find the scene with the chroma selfie. Use Info Inspector Settings to choose a camera LUT. Now, I've downloaded and installed the free Fujifilm LUTs for the GFX 100S, the X-H1, and the X-T4. You don't have to use these, but they can provide a good starting point. This is the F-Log variant. The HDR luminance waveform has a larger range of luminance values than the SDR IRE display. This image has a very narrow and compressed range. Let's expand that. Zoom in and center on the chart. Now, I'm using Final Cut's color balance tool, but I'll change from auto to white balance, and using the dropper, I'm sampling the white slice. That's already expanded the display, and I'm going to take that further, making changes for my creative intent. Uh, start with highlights, bringing them up, and then lowering the shadows, but not all the way to zero. Note that the scale here is logarithmic then adjusting the mid-tones to get the skin tones to a natural level. <laughs> There's lots of interaction and fine-tuning until it gets close and then concentrating on skin tones, making a few chroma adjustments until I'm satisfied with the results. Adjust the audio levels, trim the top and the tail, place the background for the B-roll, and add the screens I recorded from the Ninja. Then lower third supers and other titles, and the closing credits. Then review the entire project, adding the required transitions. Music, Adam's intro and extra stings, and EQ the audio, the large open space with a little reverby. When all that's done, share, which is Apple for export. Now I'm using the more efficient H.265 codec, which Apple calls HEVC. 10-bit will retain more color and dynamic range. As I said at the beginning, this workflow creates an HDR output that conforms to Rec 2020 PQ. Video one demonstrates an in-camera solution using the film simulations. Three, demonstrates hybrid log gamma recording for HLG capable displays. Now the X-H1 I use is my own. Fujifilm did not pay me. This video is not sponsored. I don't stop in the middle to sell you something. I don't let YouTube interrupt my content with ads. That makes me very grateful to those of you who've decided to become members and be my sponsors by joining this channel. Thank you. Now, if membership isn't for you, then please consider subscribing. Well, one thing, whether you're a member, a subscriber, or just stopping by to watch this video, I do read and reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. Thanks for your time today. Stay safe.